Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 6, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ever wonder how the bad guys are writing malware? Well, it's actually not that different from how any other software is written. And Xavier has a nice uh, document where he shows how recent Excel macros are really just copying code from GitHub projects. Well, this isn't really a big surprise and of course has going on for a long time. Also different uh, malware versions copying code and techniques from each other. This of course uh, does present a problem for malware detection because many of these techniques and also these code snippets are being copied here are also uh, being used in non-malicious code and as a result of course malicious and non-malicious code can end up being fairly similar. And Checkpoint found some interesting malware exploiting an older vulnerability in how Windows verifies digital signatures. The malware in question is C-Loader and C-Loader itself has been around for a while, but as typical for malware, it keeps changing, it keeps adding new tricks. And one of the new tricks it recently added is to actually append itself to legitimate DLLs. Now, this should be detected by the signature that is being used to verify these DLLs, but due to a long-standing bug in Microsoft, if you are appending data to the signature section itself, then it remains undetected. Now, Checkpoint uh, points out that uh, this was fixed originally back in 2012, but Microsoft has removed some of that fix and made it optional again uh, because it had ha some impact on legitimate software as well. So by default, this patch is not necessarily installed. This particular campaign had about 2,000 or so victims according uh, to Checkpoint. So not a ton of victims, but still Still, this is banking malware, so it is uh, quite bad if you get hit by it. It will attempt access to your bank accounts and then, of course, steal money. And as usual, uh, refer to the show notes to a link uh, to the full checkpoint write-up, which also has more details about the bug being exploited. There's also a legitimate uh, remote management software that's being used uh, by this particular attack chain. So again, something that's, uh, well, at least also used and legitimately and does not necessarily uh, trigger any antivirus signatures. The initial uh, downloader script also is not well detected, at least at the point when Checkpoint looked at it. Only three out of the 50 or so antivirus products on VirusTotal detected uh, this malicious script. And VMware fixed an uh, important vulnerability in its uh, desktop virtualization products, also in ESXi, affecting the virtual CD-ROM emulation. An attacker would essentially be able to escape the virtual machine and execute code on the hypervisor in order to exploit the vulnerability. An attacker would already essentially need to be able to execute code inside the virtual machine to access uh, the virtual CD-ROM device. Patches are available for VMware Fusion Workstation ESXi up to 6.7. The patch for ESXi 7 is still pending. I guess as a workaround, it sounds like you should be able to also just uh, remove the virtual CD device from your machine. Now, it's often there just because it's needed for the original install of the operating system. But beyond that, uh, probably not really needed to have a virtual CD device on the system. So you may as well just remove it. And yes, sorry for calling the year 2021 uh, yesterday, uh, but well, I'm not alone. And by the way, thanks for everybody who uh, noted the mistake. It's always good that someone is paying attention. But uh, yes, I'm not alone with uh, Y2K22, I guess, <laughs> vulnerabilities here. Honda apparently is having an interesting issue where uh, the internal clock in some of their cars is setting itself back to 
2002, so basically 20 years back. And even more interesting is kind of the response here from Honda that this is a bug that will sort of persist until August, and then apparently it should automatically fix itself. Uh, we'll see if that will happen or if it does actually require a patch, but if you experience this, doesn't really sound like a super serious uh, vulnerability or problem, but something you sort of can live with. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.